with an update on plans for WrestleMania 40 and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on, and don't forget to like the video. Asked by Becky Lynch on Hot Ones versus who is his inspiration for his outfits in WWE, Seth Rollins said, This is a very backhanded compliment, but Machine Gun Kelly because of his audacity. Because he looked like such a douche. Sorry, MGK. Speaking about the success of Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks said this to Sports Illustrated. Cody is the face of the WWE now, and it's cool to see because we always knew how much of a star he was. The founders of AEW will always have a lifetime bond with each other because we all know what we did for wrestling. We talk every week, and in a weird way, him leaving made us grow more as friends. We're proud of the things we accomplished with Cody, and happy to see him rising to the occasion. We're all rooting for each other. Touching on being open to taking on more roles in WWE given his injury hiatus, Big E told What Culture, I think about my time starting off in the company, by no means was I considered a good talker. It took time for me to get more comfortable and whatnot. For me to be able to stand beside Punk, Michael Cole, Pat McAfee, all these guys who were great and natural talkers was really great. I appreciate all the positive feedback. It's something that I definitely would consider. I still want to be involved with the company, regardless of what happens with my in-ring career moving forward. I've been with the company 15 years. 15 years of my life that I've been signed with this company, a job I took on a whim, and it's been such an integral part of my life. It's definitely something I'm open to. There are some really great broadcasters. Vic Joseph has done such an incredible job. It was speculated when things were getting shuffled around that maybe he gets moved up to Raw. I definitely want to make sure that I'm not in a position where I'm trying to leapfrog anyone who deserves opportunities or anyone who has been grinding at it. If it makes sense and there are other panels or opportunities to come in, I'd love to. One of the issues is the bar was set too high. My first time coming in was Vegas with this rock thing. We have a lot of work to do to make sure everyone after is as fulfilling and enjoyable. I'm definitely open to it. It means a lot to see all the positive feedback. Previously, The Miz posted a video noting how he was stuck in a room in the SAP Center. He then put out a follow-up clip showing how he got out. I'm stuck in a room right now. I'm stuck in a room. Like legit, stuck in the room. I'm not panicking, but it's a very small room that we're stuck in. They can't get us out. Look. So we have... Tried to unlock it, doesn't work. We have tried to pull on it as hard as I possibly could. Did not work. Do you think we'll be out of here in time to be on the show for Monday Night Raw? Time will tell, but I'm stuck in a tiny room. Not really tiny, I, what would you say? This is about eight by six? Yeah. Eight by six room, that's not, That's it's fair. It's, bigger than a than a what an elevator bigger than an elevator but we're definitely stuck I could if I had if I had a nail and a hammer I could knock the hinges off but there's no hammers in here and they can't slide one underneath there I might have to start looking at stuff I know what you're thinking I'm strong I'm big I should be able to pull the thing right off the hinges but I didn't stretch today. So, I don't know what we're gonna do. Look at that. Oh, let it rip. There you go. I wanna get this. Maybe this thing will just pop right off. Anything? I feel like someone's just gonna fall in my lap. Steel door, that's the biggest problem there. Is it? Is it? Is that the biggest problem? Huh? Is that the biggest problem? Steel door? Now you might be wondering, well, why am I not helping? Because if they plow in this thing, then I'm I'm getting taken out. 
All right, we'll tune in back. Check it out. Still stuck. Now people yeah. are just knocking on the door just to mess with us. Oh, oh, oh. Did we almost get it? Anything? It felt like. I feel like there's a lot of people dealing with this right now. Nah, that's not even like showing up. I mean, try to kick it in. Good luck. Oh, come on. Come on. Let her rip. Caught somewhere. It's caught somewhere, but we don't know because it's not the lock because we unlocked it. But it doesn't look like it's, if you look inside it, it doesn't look anything. Ooh, you might want to watch your hand. Yeah. Wow, we're stuck. Wow. Still stuck. In a room. Look at us. This is crazy. A credit card. Yeah. Yeah. The steel door. Okay. That's going to work. We got water. We got tons of water. I'll be all right. Can you imagine if I was claustrophobic? What would be happening right now? I'd be going nuts. But I'm not. I feel like we're a lost cause. Like there's nothing I don't think anyone can do. We don't have a screwdriver in here that we can unscrew that lock. We don't have anything in here. We got a copier. We got a TV that we can watch the show on. That's good. We got water, so we'll be hydrated. That's good. Um, nothing. Well, 15 minutes in and uh, no progress. A lot of banging. A lot of mines out there. Oh, nope. <laughs> I mean, we've got... <laughs> We're getting somewhere. <laughs> this is nuts. <sighs> Wow. Yep. Oh, wait, are they there? Wait, they want us to come out of this thing? I think so. Yeah. I think then. Oh my God. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. This is it. They, they want us to, this, this is what, what's happening right now. <laughs> wait, thank you very much. We do have drinks. We're, we're not scared. We're just, wait, are we supposed to go through this thing? Yeah, see if we can get the facility. All right. Thank you, sir. So here. All right. Well, I'm 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 gonna get out. Hi. Let me see if you can get this and just push that. There should be one little finger blocking that. Yeah. You need to get this in here and uh -huh. put the pressure and move that over. Oh, that's easy. No problem. <laughs> Says the miss. Wait, there's no way that thing can fit in there. It, but it doesn't fit. It's not. It's not. It's too thick. Do you have a thinner, like a. You got something thinner? Give me that. Like um, a putty knife? Or? No, not that. Give me the. Uh, thank you. Oh, oh baby! I mean, yeah, you guys get out. I'll, I'll, right. I'll, I'll right. We're going to crawl. I'm going to crawl out. I'll go first. Here we go. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. I got it. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry, guys. Come on. I don't want you to mess up with you, man. There we go. We're out. We're out, everyone. We're out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We got out. He's here. Cone, you coming? Acknowledging the passing of his former tag team partner, Ole Anderson, Arn Anderson wrote on X, Each one of us starts dying the moment we are born. Some of us live long, fruitful lives, some die too soon. All I've been able to figure out in my 65 years is to treat people how you want to be treated, and if they teach you anything, be grateful for that. Ole Anderson was brutally honest when it came to how he felt about life and wrestling. He gave me the rub of a lifetime, 
taking Gene's spot in the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. The four horsemen followed, and we know how that went. He was a mentor to me without meaning to be. I studied and will teach my son some oleisms. To his family and people that loved him, we grieve with you. To those who thought Ole was too honorary to die, 81 is a full life. Rest in peace, Rock. When it comes to a potential match at WrestleMania 40, Ringside News wrote that earlier this week there was a report that surfaced that claimed there are plans pitched for Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins versus Roman Reigns and The Rock for night one of WrestleMania. Ringside News can confirm that after speaking with a tenured member of the WWE creative team that this report is true. However, we were also informed that this pitch was only one of the dozen of pitches that were made for WrestleMania weekend involving The Rock. Admitting to having to remind Sting of his importance to the pro wrestling industry, AEW President Tony Khan said this about Sting as a locker room leader, telling Fantastic's views Mike Patika. I love having Sting come in and brainstorm with us. Also, working with Sting, he's one of the most selfless people, and I find that I have to push him sometimes and have to remind him, you're Sting, it's all about you. So I do feel that this run of Sting being undefeated and what he's done here in AEW is very special, Tony said. I'm sad that it's coming to an end i'm very sad that sting will be retiring but it's remarkable that sting is out there over 60 years old sting is doing more crazy things in his 60s than he's ever done before continued tony sting in aew is this extreme version of sting he has gone from being the franchise the icon to a hardcore icon and some of my favorite sting matches of his entire career and i say this just as a wrestling fan not only as the owner of aew i honestly mean this from the bottom of my heart i think some of the best sting matches he's ever had have been in AEW and that's one of the greatest careers of all time. When you see Sting today, he's so happy. The locker room has so much respect for him and we're so happy to be able to give him this great send-off. Sending a warning to Drew McIntyre in regards to messing with the bloodline, Lance Anawai told Steve Fall of Wrestling News, I'm just letting him know, man, he's messing with the wrong family. You know, he went after me. He went after Jay. He went after Roman. Man, you better watch who you mess with, man, because, you know, we got a big family. You just don't know who's next. Bringing up his personal issues with McIntyre from 2019 during his debut on Raw, he said, Yeah, man, I got a little roughed up, man, but you know, he got me from behind and took a pretty good one against the steel stairs and then, you know, against the corner post. But I like to see him face to face, man. It was hard to breathe when I hit the corner of the steel stairs. That was pretty much it. And then just trying to fight through. But, you know, nothing's going to stop me, man. My debut on Raw. Raw, especially against Shane McMahon. So just had to fight through everything like we always do, man. We're just a bunch of savages trying to make it. Opening up on their tag team title match against Sting and Darby Allen at AEW Revolution, the Young Bucks said this to Sports Illustrated. Our success is undeniable, said Matt Jackson. One day we will get our flowers, but unfortunately they will be at our gravesides. When you were cast as a villain, you must accept that role. But we know what we've done. We lived it. Hate our style of wrestling? Hate the way we look? Hate the way we talk? That's fine. But we made a lot of people a lot of money. I bathe in the tears of yesterday today's broke wrestling personalities whose only content is talking about what I did last in my backyard lazy river. It's a crazy roller coaster ride we've been on the last 20 years, said Nick Jackson. I remember watching Nitro, seeing Sting come down from the rafters to attack the NWO, and how mad I'd be that he'd always beat up Hogan. So to see him still performing at a high level all these years later is amazing. For Matthew and me to be his last match means a lot. It's the biggest match of our career, and it's a moment I didn't think would happen. This match at Revolution, nobody is more emotional about it than my brother and me, Matt said. 
Although we usually rooted against Sting when we were kids, we always respected his game. It's a lot of responsibility on our shoulders. Sting has had a legendary career, and it's up to us to stick the landing. But this isn't going to be Kobe scoring 60 points on his final night. We're looking for a shutout. And I know Sting wouldn't want it any other way. He mentioned us being in for the fight of our lives. We live for high pressure, high stakes, big fight feel matches. Nobody performs better in those types of situations than us. 64 years of age, performing in his final match or not, we're not going to take him lightly. I was a poor, newly married man with a baby on the way when I first met Sting in TNA Wrestling in 2010, said Matt Jackson. We'd hold hands and pray before some of the big shows. Now I'm extremely wealthy, wildly successful, married to the same beautiful woman, and have two kids who adore me. Nicholas and I will keep the traditional live Sunday at Revolution and say a quick prayer for Sting before our match. Match. Going over his future title match against Christian Cage for the TNT belt, Daniel Garcia told Fightful's Grab City podcast, it feels great being able to take the title off a living legend like Christian Cage is going to be one of the biggest moments ever. Somebody who has a reign of terror over AEW for the past year. Somebody who has been despicable, hateful. You call me a hater, Christian Cage is a real hater. A hateful, disgusting person. Being able to beat him and take that title, that means so much to so many people. Away from him and bring it back to somebody with a good heart. It's a much needed change. Posting a throwback photo, Kurt Angle wrote on X 37 years ago, my first and only time I won a state championship in high school. Only if my younger self knew I would win an Olympic gold medal just nine years later. Never stop believing. Dreams do come true. Believe. Revealing who he would add to the Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Danielson told the Nikki and Bree show, I really like the BCC as it is right now, but if I had to pick one person to add, I think it would be Daniel Garcia. I like his style. Speaking of adding members to factions, Biggie said this in regards to adding a person to the New Day during his absence from in-ring competition in WWE, telling what culture wrestling, yeah, yeah, it's a long time that New Day's been in WWE, we are old, our hairlines don't look the same, but yeah, it's been quite the journey and we thought for like a year or so, we've been kind of eyeing the 10 years and it's not the same. I'm not around and told those guys too, as long as I'm out, please don't feel like you're beholden to me. My voice comes on at the beginning of the song every time and I'm not around and I don't know if that's fair to those guys and hey, if you need to fill in with a third, feel free to, but they're always so adamant about like, nah, 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 this is the group and I appreciate them dearly for that. During a WWE live event, Maxine Dupree would be on the receiving end of booze from fans. This prompted many to come to her defense as Stephanie Hypes posted a clip from that event and wrote, If you're booing a wrestler on the other side of the fence for trying to do some hard sh you've never done, you can F all the way off. As Lena Vega replied, This is absolutely horrible. She doesn't deserve that. She's such a kind soul and works really hard. I would love if the bad parts of the biz don't harden her heart. They probably just mad because they can't can't drink your bath water, Maxine, Rhea Ripley said. I really wish that some of you got booed and ridiculed in the public eye while being new at your job. Learning and getting better is all a part of being human. Be better as humans. And Britt Baker showed her support by replying to Ripley with a 100 emoji. In some unfortunate news, former WWE star Virgil has passed away as referee Mark Charles III wrote, My dear friend, it is with great sorrow that I bring news from the Jones family of the passing of our beloved Michael Jones, whom we know and loved as Virgil, Vincent, Soul Train Jones, and more. Virgil passed peacefully at the hospital this morning and asked that you pray for him and for his family. May his memory be eternal. Many in the pro wrestling world reacted to this passing as Frankie Kazarian wrote, Rest in peace, Michael Virgil Jones, our 
Our interactions were always friendly and very memorable. Godspeed, sir. Mike Santana posted a photo and said RIP. GCW owner Brett Lauderdale wrote, Rest in peace, Virgil, as a performer, an incredible athlete, and a reliable soldier. As a person, he was funny, cordial, and unpredictable in all the best ways. He was a trooper and a friend of GCW. I truly feel lucky to have known him, and I'll share my personal Virgil stories forever. Matt Hardy said, RIP Virgil. Mike Jones, Virgil was a funny, unique individual that was always cool to me, and I'm saddened to hear about his passing. My thoughts go out to his family, friends, and fans. Chris Jericho wrote, Sorry to hear about the passing of Virgil, Mike Jones. During the early days of AEW, we used Mike, a.k.a. Soul Train Jones, multiple times in the Inner Circle story, and he was essentially an honorary member. I even tried to book him on the Jericho Cruise and was going to ask him again for next year. Always a character and always a good cat. Mike, a.k.a. Virgil, will be missed. Here's to you, Soul Train, having a little bit of the bubbly and a few Olive Garden breadsticks in your honor. Luke Gallo said, Rest in peace, Virgil. Thanks for being a great sport during our shenanigans and for the memories. See you down the road, good brother. Jake the Snake Roberts wrote, Shocked and saddened to hear the news about Virgil. Rest in peace, my friend. RJ City said, Virgil once regaled me with the time him and Ted DiBiase met Victoria Beckham in 1992. I now realize he meant Sarah, Duchess of York. And GCW's account wrote, GCW is saddened to hear of the passing of Virgil. He played a memorable part in GCW history, appearing at Joey Janela's Spring Break Part 1, 2, and 3. We will miss him and remember him fondly. Rest in power, Virgil. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all later.